my name is Dmitry Dolov. I'm a compiler engineer in Kotlin native team in JetBrains. Um, I work on Kotlin native backend, and uh, my talk is also mostly about Kotlin native. I would like to tell you what we're doing in Kotlin compiler to improve experience of multi-platform developers and how partial linkage helps with this. I would like to start with a short story. Uh, once upon a time, there was an issue submitted by one of our users, and um, well, uh, the user had a multi-platform application uh, with uh, many third-party libraries, and when they upgraded a version of one of libraries, the build started to crash, and it crashed with the following error. Uh, we thought, uh, yeah, you, you may see that there is something about coroutines. We thought, how could it be that coroutines cause the build to crash? Um, well, we've made an investigation and figured out that the problem is actually not about coroutines. It's about uh, a different story. It's about the incompatibility somewhere between libraries. And, uh, well, we knew that such kind of problem, oh, sorry, may exist. And one day in the future, we would probably face, uh, face it and uh, probably need to do something. But actually, that was the first issue submitted by a real user who already faced this issue, and that was a sign for us that, okay, now we have to do something about it. So what the issue was about? Um, imagine you have a multi-platform application uh, that uses two third-party libraries, uh, library A and, and library B. And uh, uh, library B depends on library A, and uh, library B was like initially compiled against an older version of library A, the version 1.0, and it uses certain declarations from A that were gone in a newer version of library A that we occasionally use in our project. And... Uh, well, if you would have a possibility to grab the source code of B, library B, and try to compile it against a newer version of A, uh, the version 2.0, uh, you likely will see a lot of compilation errors because there are unresolved symbols and like stuff like that. But um, the story is that B is already compiled, so we don't see any compilation errors here. And only when it comes to building the whole project, the build crashes. Um, one might ask how it is possible that in a real world library, some declarations are removed or uh, maybe changed in an incompatible way. Now, well, this is a kind of dangerous modification and uh, it's not backward compatible. But there is an answer. Uh, there is one legal case when this is possible uh, library offer, besides the bigger stable part of their library where everything is expected to be backward compatible, might also want to have a smaller um, unstable experimental part uh, of, of the library where they can do whatever they want. They can bring new API there, they can uh, make changes um, over different versions of library, and finally even drop this API one day if they decide they don't need it anymore. And uh, now imagine that there are multiple libraries and um, like library A and library B and both have, uh, have experimental parts. And what if uh, there is some dependency from experimental part of one library to experimental part of another library? Maybe there is a function call uh, like this one or this one, and then uh, one day you upgrade library A to a newer version, which is formally backward compatible, but uh, something has been changed in experimental part, and now these links become broken. And that's a good question, how, how sh this should be handled. Um, if we would try to compile this project with uh, the Kotlin GVM compiler, then interestingly, uh, compilation is successful. But if we would run this application, then I would say in certain scenarios, in certain execution flows, we might see the following error. And this error will happen in runtime, so when application, your application is running. 
and it tells us that um, the execution flow has reached the instruction in library B that attempted to call a non-existing non um, function in library A. And that's true because, um, well, function foo now accepts string parameter, not in parameter. So this is a different function. Um, if you have uh, good test coverage in your project, if you test all major scenarios, then you will have an opportunity to uh, detect such error during testing and take the necessary measures. Uh, probably you might want to upgrade other libraries in your project to the version compatible with uh, the version of library A, or maybe you could rewrite some parts of the source code of your application to avoid using experimental parts of any libraries at all. Um, but let's see what, what will happen if we try to compile the same sample application with the Kotlin native compiler, and we see a compilation error. I will zoom it. So uh, it says that um, module B, which, which is actually library B, uh, tried to find some symbol, which is a symbol for function foo from library A, and well, th this symbol has not been found. So the compilation ended with an error. And as you might guess, we see two different behaviors. So uh, like, Kotlin GVM compiler handles this in one way, and Kotlin native compiler handles uh, like these incompatibilities in a different way. Uh, it it uh, um, shows us a compile time error. And we thought, well, probably it would be better if um, for, for uh, application developers if they would observe just uh, one kind of behavior here. And we've decided to uh, go with a runtime error approach. So it already works with the Kotlin GVM compiler, and we've decided to also implement it in Kotlin native compiler. And this approach has two major advantages. Uh, first of all, uh, it makes library upgrades in, in your projects safer. You don't, you don't risk to crash your build when you upgrade maybe some one library to a minor version. And also it gives a freedom for library authors because they can do whatever they want in experimental parts of their libraries. Uh, before I would tell you a few words about uh, how we implemented this in Kotlin Native, I would like to, uh, to say about Klib. So Klib is a format for Kotlin libraries, for Kotlin multi-platform libraries. Um, it typically is represented as a zip file with a .klib extension with a certain directory structure inside with certain contents. Uh, what is important? We don't distribute um, multi-platform libraries in the form of the source code. We distribute them in the form of klib artifacts. And every klib contains inside an abstract syntax tree consisting of uh, declarations and expressions Well, everything uh, produced from the source code of a library, but uh, also um, analyze it and validate it. So we are sure that everything is okay here. And uh, uh, it also has signatures. What is signature? It's a kind of uh, unique identifier of every declaration. For example, function foo also has a signature. You may see it um, uh, like here at this slide. And signature uh, is computed by uh, declaration attributes, uh, by name of the package, name of the declaration itself, and for functions, it, it also includes types of value parameters. And again, signature is a kind of unique identifier for every declaration. So that means that if you change uh, your declaration in incompatible way, for example, you change type of one of value parameters, this will yield another signature and uh, like ID of your declaration will change. So now imagine, that uh, you have an abstract syntax tree somewhere in memory uh, in, inside the Kotlin compiler and uh, there is an expression like a call of function foo that came from one klib and it expects to call a function foo with a certain signature but actually uh, there is no function with such signature because like 
a different function, this is a different function in a different signature. And this is the place where compiler initially um, raised an error and it's uh, like, this happens here. Uh, it says us that, well, there is no such declaration. But uh, we, we thought we could use trick here. We could drop this expression and um, all subsequent expressions within the same block and like replace them with just one, uh, one, one expression that throws an error. And also we can compute a friendly message for this error explaining what actually went wrong here. So this way we won't crash compilation anymore. There won't be uh, compilation uh, errors, but that would produce a kind of delayed error that could happen uh, during the runtime, during the execution of your program, if um, execution flow will, will reach the point of this instruction. So let's try to compile the same project again with the Kotlin native compiler, but now with uh, the partial linkage mode enabled and compilation is successful. Uh, if we would try to run this application then in certain scenarios, in certain execution flows, we might see the following error. And it looks uh, pretty simple to what we've already seen for Kotlin GVM, just like a different error message. And uh, well, it's cool. Um, I would like to add that partial linkage is not only limited to the case with handling um, some declarations that disappeared or were changed in an incompatible way. It also covers a number of other funky cases that we will probably um, describe you on maybe another talk. Um, I would like to say that we're going to enable it in 190 beta and it will be available by default in Kotlin native compiler. And uh, we would like to try, uh, we would like to ask you to try it and give us your feedback. So if you uh, feel that uh, it works in a strange way, maybe not how you expected it should work, or if you see some bugs, please uh, don't hesitate and file us an issue and we will investigate it. and. We will try to fix bugs as soon as possible. And of course, if you're afraid, maybe for some reason, if you don't want to use it, there is a command line key that you can use to like, disable it uh, totally and everything will work for you um, absolutely as before. And uh, that's it, thank you very much. Uh, if anyone uh, has questions, you may ask me now or you may catch me uh, on the ground floor somewhere, somewhere there. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, could, could you please repeat your question? Yeah, you, you're right. Um, so, well, whenever this like partial linkage engine inside the compiler detects uh, that uh, there is a situation then s where when some declarations, some expressions should be dropped and replaced by froze error, it will also um, lock a warning with exactly the message of this error. So you will see it in like console of your uh, compiler or in Gradle logs. And it will be uh, logged with the warning log level. We have another um, command like key where you can control the log level. You can even raise it to error. Uh, it's a strange case, but <laughs> if partial linkage engine will like detect that there is a strange situation, uh, it will um, force your compilation to end with an error, but also it will like show you all the cases uh, in, 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 in your log where uh, something went wrong, so you can see it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah, that's a good question, thank you. Uh, yeah. Uh, partial linkage will also work in Kotlin.js, 
uh, well, I, I was like emphasizing Kotlin Native just because I'm a member of Kotlin Native team. But like the engine is common for all IR backends except for GVM. So like wh what we're doing, it will be uh, like automatically applicable to both in GVM and GS and even probably to Wasm, but I didn't test it. Like I don't know for sure, but it should work. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I believe what you're talking about is a good feature for a library compatibility validator. Am, am I right? Yes. Oh, yeah, I got it. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I got your idea. Thank you very much. Uh, I think we will need to consider this, but like, like the next step. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Yeah, we, we can chat. Yeah. So thank you.